Good morning. This is Pastor Tom Adams. There's a group of self-titled TV evangelists who are claiming that God speaks to them audibly in visions or dreams. I would like to give a word of warning to those who listen to them. Do not fall victim to these false teachings. What they're saying is completely anti-scriptural. In the book of 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 10, we're told that the time of miracles were to cease. The question is, when were they to cease? Verse 10 says, that which is perfect is come, is the time that they will cease. The next obvious question then is, what is that which is perfect? The use of the word that tells us that it's speaking of an object. That is a neutral pronoun, meaning it is neither male nor female. So we see it's not speaking of the second coming of Christ. What it is, is the word of God, the New Testament scriptures. In verse 8 of this chapter, it says that knowledge will vanish away. This is the knowledge that God gave directly to his followers. What the meaning here is, is that when the New Testament is finished, all of God's communication will be through his word, the Holy Bible. In the book of Acts chapter 17, it tells of the Apostle Paul speaking to a group of people in Berea. Paul showed them that the Old Testament spoke of a coming Messiah, and he proclaimed the gospel, which is faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and that alone. It further states that these people searched the Old Testament scriptures to verify the prophecy of Christ's coming. Paul had knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures. God had directly spoken to him on the road to Damascus. God had chosen him to preach the gospel. In Galatians 1-2, we see that the knowledge of the gospel that Paul had came directly from Jesus Christ. Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians, where he tells us that these direct communications from God would cease. The Holy Bible containing both Old and New Testaments is written by God. He used man's hand, but every word that it contains is inspired of God. Man wrote under his direction. These so-called evangelists are calling the scriptures old manna and that the Bible doesn't contain enough inspiration to feed Christians. In the book of 2 Timothy, by the way, which was also written by Paul, we're told that the time will come when man will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves false teachers, having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. There is only one source of sound doctrine. That is the Holy Bible. There is another warning in Revelation chapter 22 and verses 18 and 19. It's written, if man adds anything or takes away anything from God's word, God would take away his part in the book of life. The Bible tells us that we must believe in Jesus Christ alone to be saved. It also tells us how we are to live our life. First of all, we're saved by placing our faith in Jesus Christ and that by his death, burial, and resurrection, he has paid for our intention entire sin debt. After we have believed, we are to live by faith. Hebrews 10.35 says that the just shall live by faith, which means we are to rely on him and not have faith on our works or some or man or woman's visions. There is something else that we as Christians need to be aware of. There is a growing movement in the world that is trying to merge Christianity with Islam. Some are now saying that Allah is the real name of God that is in the Old and New Testaments. This again is totally false. The name of the Father of Jesus Christ is Jehovah, as it tells us in Exodus chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. And actually the name speaks of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are complete in perfection, and these three that make up the Trinity always deal in grace. One can easily see that Allah has no concept of grace, and to even suggest that he would die for man's sin would be heresy to Muslims. For the Muslim, their means of being accepted by Allah is through self-sacrificing. For the Christian, it is by faith in the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. And we are told that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We could never win anyone over Christ by violence. Violence will only breed more violence. We need to pray for those. Somehow we can tell others about Jesus Christ. Because he died for our sins as he did for their sins as well as he did for ours. We should always deal in kindness and love, but we should never compromise Christian truth. Second Timothy tells us that we are to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We see that we are to study the scriptures for knowledge of God. No new prophet, as they claim they are, is legitimate. This has been Pastor Tom Adams of the Good News Bible Church of Cohasset. May the grace and love of God become more and more real to you each and every day. Goodbye for now and thank you for listening.